I don't want you subtracting from one when you don't have to. But if you notice that your chi square part does your degrees of freedom. So to find degrees of freedom, we subtract one from your sample size. So we are going to do that. And you notice up on top that they've got some weird numbers, like 0 0.0025, 0 0.975. So that comes something different. We have to do a little bit different than our level of significance here. So we're going to play with this a little bit. You also notice, if you remember, we can draw a line between 0.90 and 0.10. There's your symmetry of the graph. Okay, so there's pairs of numbers that work like this. We're going to kind of look at your pairs because by looking at your pairs, you'll know which one is, is the one we need, the one on the left or the one on the right. All right, so let's up jump to the first one and work these together. So we're going to find a critical value for a right tail test. Now, if you remember, your chi-square works in the positive. It doesn't have any negative. And they all kind of have a different shape to them, which is why we don't really get a good area of thing for this. So if we're shading for a right tail test, we're going to kind of do the same. We're going to label the shading reject H0. And we don't have any p-values on this. So everything is reject. This in the open part is failed to reject H0. Here is my critical value. Chi square, we write chi like this. We pronounce the C-H-I, chi. So we have a chi square, and I put the C for critical value. They probably use an O, so it's a sub O. They use a sub O. I use a C. Who's the other one you like to use your sign for? Now, when you come down here, remember it is always area to the right. If I look at this and I look at your point one zero, if I subtract it from one, what is the other part to this point nine zero, right? One of these is the lesser one, one of them is the greater one. If you look the way your chart goes, it's like, hang with me for a second. Notice your point nine says first, because it's always area to the right. So if your point nines are gonna have those lesser values, your point zero five, zero two are gonna have the greater values. Because this is on the right hand side, you should take the one that has the greater value. In this case, it would be the point 10, right? The point 10 has the bigger value. If I was taking a point nine, zero and a point one zero. Wouldn't my point one zero have the bigger value? So that's where your cutoff is going to be. Your degrees of freedom is going to take 25. And you're going to fall down into this point 10. So you're going to look up 25. You're going to go across the point 10. And you're going to see that says what? Three eight two. But if I looked at the point 90, what would the point 90 be? To the left of it, it would be 16 something. But I want the greater one, right? I want the one on the right. So I'm going to keep the one on the right. Remember when we kind of did this with the other, when we did your confidence interval? We picked out the two pairs and we said, smaller one goes to the right, larger one goes to the left. Okay? That's all we have to do. Just that. So the finding the right hand right tail test is not so bad. That's all we have to do. Now, finding a left tail test. We're gonna do this the same way. If it's shaded in, reject H0. If it's open, fail to reject H0. You've got to find again a critical value. The left tail test, nice and easy. The right tail test takes a little bit of work. So now, we're looking at a level of significance of 0.01. What is our degrees of freedom? 10. Now, 0.01, if I subtract it from 1, what's the other part of it? 0.99. So now, I'm going to look in my column for degrees of freedom 10. I'm going to find my 10. I'm going to look at my point 99. I'm going to look at my point 01. 
Do I want the smaller one or do I want the larger one? Smaller, because I'm on the left hand side, right? These numbers, remember, go from zero to infinity. There's no negative numbers. I don't want you subtracting anything, dividing anything. I just want you to do it this way. So, give me the smaller of that pair of numbers. Look in your chart. 0.99 should say this. 2558. Five, and what does 0.01 say? It says 23.209. Okay, so because I'm on the left hand side, which one is the smaller number? This guy. There's my cutoff. Remember, look for your parents. But place it on your chart. You gotta be you gotta be smart with this. You gotta place it on your chart. You're gonna get a pair of numbers. I don't want you switching in your mind which way your area goes. All I want you to do is look for the pair. If it's the left-hand side, take the smaller one. If it's the right-hand side, take the larger one. Right, you're going to label your graph the exact same way. Reject H0, fail to reject H0. Okay, you guys try this one. I've got a left, hand, a left tail test. So again, I shade this. I say reject H0. I say fail to reject H0. <coughs> that that little fail that little reject H0, that's the smallest error that I'm gonna allow. I'm not gonna allow anything smaller than that when we check this stuff. I'm looking for my cutoff value. There's no p values for this guy. You find me the cutoff. So find me the cutoff value. this guy and I got a 0.95. Look for a pair. Do I want the smaller of the two or the larger? Smaller on the left hand test. So give me the smaller of the two. Everybody got it? Good. a little bit backwards in our thinking because remember the area goes to the other side but I don't want you to think that. I just want you to look at the pair, place it on your graph. If I want the left hand side, I want the smaller. If I want the right hand side, I want the larger. Okay, let's try two tails. Now what did we do with the two tails and all the other ones? What do we do first? Divide by two. So in our two tails, we're going to do exactly that. We're going to say, okay, let's label two tails here. Remember, it goes from zero to infinity. We've got two tails. Reject H0. Fail to reject H0. I've got one tail over here, and I've got one tail over here. It will not be the same number. So I've got a degree to freedom of 8, and we always took this and we divided it in 2. Right? F of 5 is 2 and a half, so we're good there. Now, if I subtract this from 1, what's the other part to this guy? I have to look up two things. Okay, 975. So degree to freedom 8. Go to the point zero two five and the point nine seven five and put the smaller one on the left hand side, the larger one on the right hand side. 
There's no negative numbers in this. Don't say anything negative. So are you looking at your table since I gave you table set? Degrees of freedom, what degrees of freedom should I look up? Eight, what's the smaller number? Good, and what's the larger number? Good. That's the toughest part of doing this, is finding those values. Good. Okay, one more, and you're going to try this one. Take a minute and try this one. I've got a two-tail test. My N is 51, and right now my level of significance is a 0.01. But do I have to share this guy? Two tails, first thing we do is what? Divide by two. Take this guy and divide it by two. Divide it by two now before you separate it. And find its matching part. Neither one of these are negative, but they are two different values. Then come up with the left hand side one. Sorry, let's get. Okay, so that's the right hand side one, right? That's the right hand side because it's larger. Okay, good. What's the left hand side one, the smaller one? Good. And that's where we place them. A zero. This goes from zero to infinity. So the smaller number has to go on the left hand side, the larger number has to go on the right hand side. You good with that? Right. Not so bad, right? we look at this and we say, okay, must be normally distributed and they're going to have to tell us this. And remember, for a chi-squared, we either use a variance or we use a standard deviation. So the same thing happens when you did your confidence interval. If they give you a standard deviation, then you have to square it. If they give you a variance, you don't square it. So your symbols are this. Write this down. S squared is your sample variance. S is my sample standard deviation. So if they give me just the sample standard deviation, I'm going to have to bring it into this formula and square it. If they give me the S squared, I just take out S squared and I replace it with the variance. Same like we did with your confidence interval. So we're testing a population variance or we're testing a, 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 against a population standard deviation, whatever. It said about variance about the population or the standard deviation about the population. And again, we're going to test it with our sample information and we're going to draw a conclusion and we're going to interpret it. So our critical values are going to be where they're falling. There's no p-value on this because that curve is constantly changing. This is your formula, and you kind of remember it a little bit. 
We did this a little bit and we changed the bottom of it the last time, the denominator. But that is your formula that we're going to use for your test statistics. And then we're going to just see where did this fall on your chart. Alright, so let's see what, what we're talking about here. The rest is going to work the same. You're going to be told that your population is normally distributed. You're going to state your claim. You're going to identify which one is the claim, HOHA. You're going to make your sketch. You're going to do your degrees of freedom. You're going to find your critical value or values. Determine your areas of reject. Find your test statistics and see where it falls. Make a decision. Reject H0. Fail to reject H0. Interpret your decision. The rest of it is fairly the same. So let's do one. A dairy process processing company claims, well, here's my claim, here's my claim, that the variance, and they're talking population variance here, because he's making a statement about a population. So my symbol for this is sigma squared of the total amount of fat and whole milk processed by the company is no more than, some of you are still struggling with these symbols. What is no more than? What symbol is that? Less than or equal to. It cannot be more than that. So, this is his claim. The population variance is less than or equal to 0.25. Now, me being the dairy processing company, would I want to say that my milk has so much fat in it that it's greater than 0.25? Would I want to tell people it's greater than 0.25? No, of course I don't. I want to tell them no more than, at most. You're not going to find more than this fat in my milk. I don't want to tell them it's more fatty. You're not going to drink my milk. This is my claim. Is it my HO or my HA? HO, good, it has an equal sign. So my HA is greater than 0.25. So far, nothing's changed. They told us our population was normally distributed so we can use this. So next thing we do is we make a graph. Now remember, there's no negatives here. Do we have a right tail test or a left tail test? A right, because we follow the HA. Okay, now, you suspect this is wrong. You're going to challenge this. So you pull out your sample, a random sample of 41. And you find it has a sample variance of 0.27. You're going to test this at a level of significance of 0.05. You want to know if there's enough evidence to reject the company's claim. Reject has to go along with an HO, does it? Good, so, so far so good. Now, your formula is simple. This is your test statistic. This is what I'm going to test against after we find your critical value. This is very simple. This is your degrees of freedom. This is from your sample. This is from your population. There's nothing else they're giving us. There's no mean, there's no proportion, there's nothing else. They're either giving us a sample or a variance. And that's all we have to work with. So we do have to find your critical value. That's what we just did. So we said, okay, I'm looking at a level of significance of 0.05 with my degrees of freedom. 40 and minus 1. Now, it's either going to be a 0.95 or a 0.05. It should be the greater one or the lesser one. Which one do I need? The greater one, because I'm on the right-hand side of the graph. Remember, these go from zero to infinity. There are no negatives. Do not make anything negative. So I look at degrees of 40, degrees of freedom of 40. I look over the 0 0.5 and the 0.95. If they add up to 1, they give me my whole graph. And I pick the larger one. So I get a, a cutoff value. Of 55.758. Five, 
That's my critical value. Good so far? Okay. I'm going to test. I'm going to test this. I'm going to put in my information. I don't have a whole lot. My degrees of freedom. 40. My test variance. Since it is already squared, do I need to square it? Mm -mm. It's already squared. It's a variance. The population one comes from the original claim or the statement. Do I need to square that? No. I put it in my calculator just like you read it. 40 times 27 divide by 25. And I come out with a chi-square of 43.2. Now I look for 43.2. Is it to the left or to the right of 55.758? To the left, somewhere around here, and I say, okay, I'm here. What is my decision? Fail to reject H0. Not the claim, not anything else, H0. Now, this was my claim, my H0. If I fail to reject it, I kind of have to agree with it, right? But I follow my chart. If my claim is H0 and I fail to reject it, there's not enough evidence at a level of 0.05 to reject the company's claim that there is no more than 0.25 fat in, my, in the whole milk. I have to write that whole thing out. And it took points off on your test if you didn't write it out. So it's not bad, right? The hardest part is probably finding your, your cutoff value. Right. Let's do a, a right tail test. I'm jumping over to example five. I want to do one of these. Because really that's all you need to do is one of these. Mm -hmm. The hardest part we did is cut off value. A company claims that, here's the claim, and this time, standard deviation. About the length of time it takes an incoming telephone call to be transferred to the correct office is less than 1.4 minutes. We're talking about the standard deviation. So, how do I write my claim? Sigma, do I square it? No. So, I'm a standard deviation. Is what? Less than 1.4 minutes. Is this my HO or my HA? HA, and again, they tell me my population is normally distributed. So standard deviation is greater than 1.4, greater than or equal to. That's my HO. What tail test do I have? Left. Follow the HA. So let's come over here. Reject H0. Fail to reject H0. And there's my critical value. Would that be negative? No. no. Good. They're always positive. So to find my critical value, I have to look at my test information. So I'm sampling 25 incoming phone calls. I don't get a lot of information here. That has a standard deviation from my sample F of 1.1 minutes at a level of significance of 0.10. So what's my degrees of freedom if I have 25 in my sample? 24. So I'm going to look these guys up. I'm going to look up the pair. Why? Because I need the smaller or the larger? Smaller. I need the smaller. So this time the point 90 is going to give me the smaller. I don't care which one it is. I just need the smaller of the two. So I notice when I look at table 6, I see the 9 first. So I pull that guy out, ladies, 
There's my cutoff bag. <laughs> you were whispering that to Olivia? Oh, I'm sorry. My mistake. My mistake. So, again, we have a very simple formula. But we have one little glitch here. And we don't have a variance, we have a standard deviation. So we square it, good. So my degrees of freedom is 24. My standard deviation from my sample is 1.1. And like Angeli said, square it. My standard deviation from my population is in my statement. 1.4 squared. Put it in your calculator just like you read it. Order of operations does the right thing. 24 times 1.1 squared divided by 1.4 squared. Anybody come up with an answer? This is my test statistic. I used my information from my sample to test this. Anybody come up with an answer? Or if you were paying attention, you could look in the book. 14.816. And I want to see where does that fall? Does it fall to the left or to the right of 15.659? To the left. So we're in here. 14.816. It didn't quite get to 15. Remember, these go from zero on up. So what is my decision? Reject HO. I fall into that shaded area of reject HO. If I reject HO, can I support the company's claim? Yeah. So there is enough evidence to support the company's claim at a level of significance of 0 0.10 that the, the standard deviation, remember to use the right words here, standard deviation times between length of telephone call to be transferred to the correct office is less than 1.4 minutes. Good. You're going to do the two tail test now or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Chris is already packing up on me. Enough for today. Okay, tomorrow we'll do a two tail test, and that is the end of this one. I'll just give you a little assignment to do. This way I have them all written out, so if you need access to them, they're there. This is notes, because I was kind enough to put all the notes in the whole book into one packet. And then these are the problems that we're going to do over the, the course of the week to the final. Okay? Do you have to do them if you feel like them? But I figured we can do them like a little each day of the week. Four days the following week and three days. Eight, eight, eight. So we have seven days of class. So pretty good we did like the 30 problems came in five each day. Okay, you, yeah, you were, you were in the 